from scouting, defenseman from Prolunda. And uh, again, thanks for taking the time, Simon. Welcome. Yeah, thanks. Uh, pleasure to be here. Okay, let's get right to the questions and let's start with Adam Kimmelman of NHL.com. Go ahead, Adam. Hi, Simon. Um, just curious what your plans are for next season and do you think you're ready to come right to the NHL and play for whatever team drafts you? Uh, yeah, uh, that's the question I, I get a lot. What's the plans for next year? Uh, the plan right now is to play with Froland and uh, play for them the whole uh, the whole season out. Uh, I don't know what uh, what the team that draft me says, but I'm pretty open actually. Uh, I I want to play in front of right now, and that's what I'm uh, I'm going to do. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see about that. Thanks, Adam. Next question comes from Yanni Bengston. Go ahead, Yanni. Yeah, is it right if I do this in Swedish? Absolutely. All right. Hey, Simo, Janne Bengtsson här på NHLs svenska hemsida. Ja, tjena. Du, you know, eh, du fick lämna junior-VM-truppen. Du var ganska gjuten där, trodde ju alla. Eh, men du fick lämna den väldigt kort innan, innan det drog igång. Hur påverkade det dig? Var det liksom en sån här motgång som... Det var ju en motgång som vem som helst skulle ha brutit ihop på, men inte du tydligen. Uh, nej, alltså jag såg väl själv det som en grej att ja, uh, men nu måste uh, alltså jag måste bli bättre nu på de grejerna antagligen eftersom jag inte platsar i laget uh, så det var nog mer en boost för mig kan jag tycka uh, det är väl så jag brukar känna från uh, olika motgångar att man kommer starkare ut ur dem uh, så Nej, jag tog, jag tog vara på tillfället att träna hemma, eh, spela med föräldrar och, och utvecklas där hemma istället eh, för att försöka ja, men ta en plats eh, till eh, nästa gång. Då. Mm. Can I do one more? Okej, okay, make a quick, Janni. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Eh, jag skriver också om William Eklund här. Han har ju påbrå där. Pappan har ju spelat över 500 matcher, var Christian? Har du ja. Jag hörde att, läste någonstans att din mamma är personlig tränare. Har hon varit inblandad i din karriär? Eh, ja, det har hon. Hon, kör, hon är PT och hon har startat ett eget företag då, där hon har hand om powerplates. Så ja, det har hon väl haft. Hon har, hon har kört med mig lite extra. Och både rörlighet och fysisk styrka så det har det varit... Det har varit positivt att köra med henne. Thank you, Yanni. Simon, I'd ask you to repeat those answers in English, but we have so many hands up, I want to get to more questions. So let's go to Mike Morialli from NHL.com. Thanks, John. Hi, Simon. Um, Simon, who's your favorite NHL player to watch, and, and what qualities does he possess that you try to maybe incorporate into your game? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh... I like to watch a lot of players, actually. Uh, I don't think I have one favorite player, uh, but one that I'm really uh, lucky, looking up to is, of course, uh, Niklas Lidstrom. Uh, he doesn't play anymore, but I watch a lot of uh, players right now, and uh, yeah, a few of them is uh, Miro Heiskanen, and Victor Hedman, uh, Kyle McCarr, uh, we have Queen Huge, uh, a lot of the defenders that are good on different stuff uh, that I try to bring into my own game. So uh, yeah, I just try to watch as many good players as possible to to fill up my game of uh, of that they are good at. So. I see it that way. Thanks, Michael. Next question comes from John Warrow, the Associated Press. Go ahead, John. Um, hello, Simon. Um, how much do you look at? I mean, it, it's kind of how much do you, do, do you follow maybe a guy like Rasmus Dahlin, who was the number one pick and has had some struggles in, you know, with adapting to the style of the coach or, you know, the inner, uh, you know, the style of the NHL rank. How much, do, I mean, do you pay attention to that? And, and, and does it um, maybe feed into your idea that maybe you need to develop more in Europe before you make the jump to the NHL? Uh, I think that Rasmus Dahlin has had a terrific, uh, terrific start. Uh, and of course he's, 
he's so good at being offensive uh, and uh, and so uh, and I I try to be as good uh, as possible at both ends so I try to be like really good defense and and be a really good offense too so I, I try to build up uh, yeah so much I can before I go over and uh, of course when I feel ready f- and I have done that uh, I will go over to to play over there if uh, if the team give me the chance so yeah thank you John next question comes from Ryan Kennedy go ahead Ryan Thanks, John. Hey, Simon. Um, Sweden, the the world under 18, sort of a, an up and down tournament. You ended up winning bronze. How did you feel about the the team's play and and your own play at that tournament? Uh, I feel like uh, the team and and me uh, didn't play as good as we can in the group. Uh, I feel like. Especially for me, it was it was a difference to come from the men's and play and play on a smaller rink and uh, and so and it was for the whole team just to to play on a smaller rink and how to play that over there is is pretty different. But uh, when when we start to play uh, like in the playoff, we we really find each other and and use the rink uh, to our uh, to our game system. So. It went better uh, at the playoff, but the group was uh, was pretty, yeah, not bad, but uh, not not so good that we can play. Thanks, Ryan. Next question comes from Brian Hedger. Go ahead, Brian. Has there been a lot? And are the Columbus Blue Jackets one of those teams? Brian, I think you're on mute at the start of that. If you have, if you can repeat it. Sorry about that. Yeah, same idea. yeah sorry about that. Uh, I just wondered how many teams you may have talked to so far. Uh, you know, among those top ones that, that you're projected to go with, and uh, were the Blue Jackets one of them? And how did that go? If, if you talked to them. Uh, yeah, I've talked to to, to a lot of teams. Uh, right now, it's it's been dropping off. Uh, just a few teams uh, that I'm. But I'm talking to a little extra now, and yeah, I've talked to the Columbus, and uh, we have a good conversation, and uh, yeah, just you see where, where the draft is going. So yeah, I'm just decided to to be in the position that I am, and uh, yeah, really great, grateful. Thanks, Brian. Next question comes from Mark Shy. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, Mark, I think you need to unmute yourself. Oh, can you not hear me? Now can you not hear you. me? Okay, uh, now. I got you. Sorry about that. Simon, just about the pandemic, and um, everyone's had to get ready um, and go over certain challenges to be ready for the draft year. What were some of the biggest challenges you've had to overcome to be ready for this? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, we have... Uh, I, I don't think I have uh, been disturbed at the pandemic so much. Uh, I I have been pretty lucky to to train with uh, the Fronda Pro team, and I have uh, been uh, yeah training the whole season uh, around. Uh, so uh, I've just been lucky to to have yeah to get to train and to develop my myself as a player uh, the whole year and. Uh, yeah, the pandemic hasn't disturbed me. Of course, it's been uh, been uh, it's been terrible at uh, when we we di- didn't go to to different uh, sort of tournaments uh, like the Helinka and uh, and so. But uh, yeah, I'm happy that I been on ice and have trained with uh, with Frolanda. So yeah. Thanks, Mark. Next question comes from Ansar Khan. Go ahead, Ansar. Yeah, hi, Simon. Uh, what specifically about the Nick Lidstrom did you like about his game? And was there any uh, aspects of his game that you tried to incorporate into your own? Uh, yeah, uh, of course, he's a, he's a legend here in Sweden. And I think every every defender here in Sweden uh, know who he, 
who we are. Uh, he's a terrific uh, guy. He's uh, an easy player that, uh, that makes a great effort for the team. And I think that's every, what every defender wa- wants to achieve, like being there for the team and to to play easy, to, to be strong, aggressive and win one-on-one duels to be hard to play against. Uh, and uh, that's what I like about him. Uh, and when he played, he was a leader and that's, uh, that's the goal. Thanks, Ansar. Next question comes from Max Boltman. Go ahead, Max. Hi, Simon. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to follow up and see which teams you've, uh, you said you've been talking to a few extra, which, which teams have you been talking to the most? And, and second, what kind of advice or, or how much have you talked to Lucas Raymond through the process about um, th- this whole process? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know how much I can go into to be talking about. I, I've been talking to a few teams uh, like uh, uh, Seattle, Anaheim, uh, LA, Vancouver, uh, yeah, Detroit, uh, New Jersey, like in that area. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've talk, I talked to Lucas a little bit. Uh, he's uh, it's been a pandemic here, here in Sweden, but now we start to release. I train with him uh, actually this week. Uh, and uh, yeah, we talk a little bit uh, just to, you just want to know and how, how things are going. Uh, so uh, yeah, a little bit. We have talked to each other. Yeah. Thanks, Max. Uh, Simon, thanks for taking the time. Congratulations on how far you've gotten. And uh, I know it's going to be an exciting couple of weeks. Uh, thanks again for taking the time. Thanks. Thanks, Sylvia.